Greetings everyone, this is Norn Expert here back again with another video. Today we are going to be solving problem number 41 and the difficulty it's going to hit at is medium. Uh, this problem was asked by Facebook and I've also seen this problem being asked by Amazon and Google. Alright, let's just get down to it. So given an unordered list of flights taken by someone, each represented as a pair uh, which has an origin and a destination and a starting point, we need to compute the person's itinerary. Uh, if no such itinerary exists, we need to return null. And if there are multiple possible itineraries, we need to return so graphically smallest one. Uh, all flights must be used in the itinerary. And we've been given an example over here. So if there are a list of flights, as you can see over here, um, and this is basically a list of whatever you want to call it, you can call it tuples. Um, the first element inside your tuple is the source, and the second is your destination. So if you're starting from YUL, you can see that starting over here. So this particular flight has value in it and also um, the destination is y by z. So now what you want to do is you want to hop over to a flight where y by z is your source, which it is over here. So you have y by z over here, which has SFO as its star destination. So now what you want to do is you want to hop over to SFO as a source flight and it's over here and it sort of goes to HKO and then so on and so forth. So basically your return list would be uh, this particular outcome and they've given a few other examples as well and you can pause this video and go to them uh, one thing which we sort of have to make sure of is the fact that we need it to build extra graphically the smallest one uh, in other ways we can just you know think of it as it just needs to be sorted uh, that's just the simplest way of me explaining it to you um, and yeah and basically return the itinerary which is going to be a list which is going to be hey from this source to this Flight to this flight to this flight to this flight. That's all your destinations that you want to hit. All right, cool. So fortunately, we were able to find a similar problem on lead code. And again, you can pause this video and check out the link given in the description below. Uh, and it's the exact same problem. It's it's giving a lot of notes over here. You can see it. Um, and I would urge you to sort of go through it on your own. But again, there's not much here. Uh, the only thing which we sort of have to take care of is the fact that the representation of the data or the list of flights which have been given to us is not the most optimal way of, of us to you know compute it um, because if you have to look for let's say one particular um, source let's just say it as MUC or a JFK or something we'll have to iterate through all the elements and that's just like computationally heavy um, so that's something which we'll be taking care of and over here the only difference than the daily coding problem question is the fact that we know for a fact that we are going to be starting from JFK. So th the destination is always going to be JFK and we'll be beginning from there. And that's how we'll progress with our entire solution. All right, cool. So before we go get into the actual implementation, I want you to understand that this problem can be solved um, through brute force as well, but it will be like really, really computationally heavy. Uh, and the best approach to you know solve this particular problem is by using a concept of backtracking. If you're not sure of what backtracking is, do not be scared. I will explain it to you. And what we'll be doing is we'll be using a concept of DFS as well, which is depth for search. Um, it just sort of reduces the complexity of the entire problem. It's We all know what's the complexity of um, depth, depth for search approach. Um, and whenever you do that, you're always you know, computing in, on the basis of the number of edges, on the number of cities, or sort of going on from there. So in all in all, you know, you're, you're, you're not doing uh, or you're not dealing with a complexity which is that heavy. It's like something based on n and that's it. All right, uh, again, the first thing that we want to start off with is our base condition. So we'll just do that. We'll just say, hey, if no tickets have been given to us, we return nothing. And this is just to sort of get us going. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to convert this tickets data into a dictionary representation so that we don't have to traverse or iterate through all the elements, right? And what we'll be doing is inside our dictionary, the key value is going to be the source, uh, and the uh, like the value value in, inside our dictionary is going to be a list representation of all the targets which are there. The reason why we're keeping a list is actually pretty obvious. Uh, it's because you know one city can have multiple flights which have multiple various different destinations. So this is a pretty real world scenario. You know, if you're taking uh, a flight from India to let's just say US or you're taking a flight from India to Singapore, it will be represented as, it doesn't need to be represented as two different values, right? You will have India as your source and you will have 
uh, US as one of the elements inside your list and Singapore as one of the elements inside your list. And then basically you can go on from there. So the way to do this in Python is actually pretty easy. You can write a lot of if else conditions or you can just use the concept of uh, default dictionaries. So let's just do that. What we're gonna call it is default uh, tickets dictionary. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna import this from the collections module uh, and just say, hey, I need dict and we pass in list. So by default, whenever we access one particular key, which does not exist inside this particular variable, it's gonna automatically convert it or sort of assume that it's gonna be a list and then move on from there, right? So now all we have to do is for all, all the tickets which have been given to us, we need to sort of compute and sort of push them inside our tickets dictionary. So let's just do that. We'll just say, hey, uh, give me the source and destination of each ticket. So basically, um, since it's represented as a tuple, we can sort of you know, bifurcate it out as the source and destination. Uh, again, this is a semantics. You can do this in any way you're comfortable with. It's not really um, you know, that important, but let's just do this. So all in all, what you have is a ticket dictionary which has a source and a list of all the destinations. So let's just do a quick print so that we, and we can see that you know, we're getting the right values. Hopefully this should run a little quickly. Yeah, so you have a default date and you can see MUC is key values have been denoted like this. Awesome. So now all we have to do is we need to understand how we're going to be using our, our DFS or a backtracking approach. Again, it's very, very simple. Uh, but before we do that, we need a particular variable which can store all our routes that we have gone through. So let's just make a route. Uh, list and as we know for a fact that we're going to be starting with JFK So let's just push it inside and at the end what we're going to do is we just want to return the roots Again, this is pretty simple now all you have to do is we need to make our DFS function or DFS utility function And let's just write that let's just do hey def DFS and let's not give it any parameters till now um, The reason for that is is because I want you to understand what those parameters are going to be so we know for a fact that roots is a, is a particular list which has already been accessible to us. Um, so, you know, we don't really need to pass that. What we do need to pass is the fact that where exactly is the source. So source is something which is important for us. So let's just say, hey, we need to pass in source. And in this example, since we're starting with JFK, we'll pass in the string JFK. And that's basically it. So we, that's the only parameter which is actually required. Everything else is already global, um, at least for this DFS utility function, this inner function, so we can access all these variables. Um, and that's basically it. Uh, one other thing which we sort of need to understand is the fact that when do we exactly stop our DFS recursive calls? And the way to understand that uh, is actually two ways. Either you, know, you keep on popping out all the values from your uh, tickets list, which is actually not really relevant, uh, what you could actually do is you could uh, check the uh, length of the roots list uh, and that's always going to be whenever it's equal to uh, the length of the tickets plus one we know for a fact that all our roots have been filled up um, and you can sort of you know try, try to check it out in this example as well you have around um, I believe you have four four flight plans um, and your roots list will always be you know uh, the flight plan plus one that will basically help us understand, hey, all those parts have been traversed, and then we'll go on from there. So let's just do that. We'll say, hey, if the length of our routes is equally equal to um, the length of the tickets which have been given to us plus one, we need to return some value. Let's just return true, a Boolean value. Um, and now we'll be going through our, um, you know, we'll be going through that particular destination that we've computed inside our source uh, to our, our tickets dictionary. So basically whatever source has been passed in, basically get all the destinations for that particular thing. And then, you know, do a for loop on them and just basically do backtracking on it from there. So again, all you have to do is, hey, give me all the destinations which are there um, and basically give them from the tickets dictionary so we do this and this and basically over here we'll have all the destinations for the source 
parameter which has been passed in uh, one thing which which I know which I sort of told you before is that we have to you know take care of the lexicographically uh, or lexical order of those values so uh, for that all you have to do is you just say sorted um, and that's just going to help you out so we just say hey sort them out based on the strings which have been given and then go on from there and now all we need to do is for each destination inside the destinations list which has been uh, you know fetched from the tickets dictionary what you want to do is you want to perform backtracking here so let's just try perform oops let me just remove this cursor we perform backtracking so as you know that dfs uses uh, it's going to do a recursive call but but before we do that i would like to explain how i like to do backtracking it's actually a pretty simple example just before you're going to do your recursive calls you either push something or pop something inside your list and then you move on from there um, again it's actually pretty simple so what you want to do is uh, the destination which you have fetched from the destinations list, you want to pop that out from the tickets dictionary, right? And the roots value, you want to push that value in, then call your recursive call, you call your DFS call, and let's just let it run. And since it's going to return a true, if it returns true, then just basically, you know, come out of that for loop, do a return. If it does not come, it's going to return a false or return none, in which case you pop out that same value from roots. And the same thing you keep on append, you append that value back. So again, if you didn't understand what I was saying, um, you just say, hey, roots append the destination and just give a few spaces and to roots pop. I don't really need to give destination because pop will pop out the last value which has been appended inside that root, right? Uh, now we just need to pop out the destination from uh, the tickets dictionary source. So the way to do that is by just saying, "Hey, tickets dictionary source dot remove," and you remove the destination from here. And over here, you just write, "Hey, tickets dictionary needs to be added back to the destination." So this is it. Um, all you're saying is, "Hey, uh, remove it and then append it later on." And now um, this isn't your entire backtracking approach. And all you have to do now is we just have to recursively call um, your DFS function. So the way you can do that is just by saying, hey, DFS of destination, because destination will become a new source. And this particular value is going to return a Boolean value. So what you can do is you can do, hey, if it's a true value, then you can just you know come out of this particular loop otherwise if it's a false right um it will not come here it will not return and it will push those values back inside your tickets dictionary as well as you know popping that particular destination from your roots list again if you do not understand this entire approach all we're doing is we, we're just defining what all values you need to push inside your your list and what all values you want to push outside or sort of pop outside from your tickets dictionary and then basically you want to move on from there all right cool so let's just um and that's actually basically it you don't really need to do anything more so let's just try running this particular example hopefully this should run fine all right so we can see that there's a little bit of a problem here and we just need to identify what the problem is All right, so um, the reason why this is actually not running is because you're doing, and it's all actually running for only um, two steps is actually pretty uh, funny. It's because you're doing an if condition inside your DFS and it returns a true, but after that you're returning false. So what you want to do is you want to return true so that all the other DFS functions which have been called can execute also properly and they don't pop out that particular value. So hopefully this should run and it is running and that's basically it. So let's just submit this particular solution. Again, uh, there's not much that we're doing. We're just doing simple backtracking with a touch of DFS inside of it. And this is obviously running in a complexity of a uh, number of edges which have been visited plus the number of nodes which you're visiting at that particular moment of time. And also space-wise you're using uh, the recursive call stack just to you know push those value in and you're using the tickets dictionary 
uh, which is going to be a little bit memory heavy, but it's not that memory heavy. Uh, and all in all, what you're going to do is, you know, for taking care of the lexical order, you're sorting those values uh, as you're popping them out from your destination. And then basically you're moving on from there. Uh, you can do the sorting at the very beginning as well. That works as well. It's, it's not really that relevant, but all in all, you can do it whenever you please. And that's basically it. Uh, eventually you're going through all the destination, you're pushing them inside your routes, you're doing a DFS call, and then you're just popping them out to require them. Cool, and you can see it's not the most faster solution, it's not the most memory efficient, but it sort of gets the job done. Uh, you can obviously optimize this just by you updating the variables and all those things, but that's not really important. Um, cool, and if you did have any comments, if you didn't understand something, do leave it in the comment section below. I would love to handle all your queries. And if you did like this video, do give a like and do subscribe to this channel. We are discussion over here, and we would love to have you on board with us. And again, if you've already subscribed, you are awesome, we all know it, and have an awesome day. Thank you.